In this tutorial, I'll teach you how to scrape web data using Playwright and Python. Then I'll show you how you can use AI to make scraping even easier. The AI part uses AgentQL, which can get elements and data from the web using natural language. So what exactly is Playwright? Playwright is a framework developed by Microsoft that allows you to automate interactions with web pages, like clicking, filling out forms, or scrolling. Many people use it to help with end-to-end -end testing, but in this tutorial, we'll focus on using it to extract data from websites. Let's get Playwright installed. Make sure you have Python installed first, then open up your terminal, and then run the following commands. We got pip install Playwright, and then Playwright install. This will install the Playwright package and the necessary browser binaries. Now let's set up a basic script to scrape data. In our code editor, we'll create a new file called scrape.py. Here's some code that is a simple script that opens up a browser and navigates to a web page. First, we have from playwright.sync API import sync playwright. This imports the synchronous version of Playwright's API, which allows you to control browsers in a simple step by step manner without using asynchronous code. The sync playwright function initiates playwright, letting you create and interact with browser instances, navigate to web pages, and perform actions like clicking or scraping data. So this code is going to first launch a Chromium browser, and it's going to create a new page, and then it's going to navigate to example.com, then it's going to print the title, and then it will close the browser. So let's run the code. And we see it says example domain in the terminal. And if we go to example.com, we can see what it looks like. So it got the title from this website. And that's how easy it is to start automating with Playwright. Let's scrape some real data next. We'll grab a list of quotes from a demo website. And then we'll do a final project where we scrape actual YouTube comments from YouTube. Let's walk through this updated code. In this script, we're grabbing all the quotes from the page using the locator function. So it starts off pretty much the same. It goes to this web page, quotes to scrape.com and then we use the locator function to find the CSS selector dot quote and we are going to get all the text from each element that has the class dot quote. So how did we know to look for the dot quote element? Well in order to find the elements we want to scrape on a page we can check out the page in the browser's dev tools. So here's the website, Quotes to Scrape. It, like I said, it's a sample website that you can use to practice web scraping. So to figure out the CSS selector we need, we can open up the dev tools and we can kind of select what we need here. And then we can just kind of go through all these elements to find out what we want. And so when I hover over this one, you can see this is all in blue and you can hover over each element to see what you want. And we see this one has the class of quote. So that's how we know to scrape the class of quote. We could also scrape a class of row or really any other class that we want. We just want the text inside the elements with a class of quote. On more complicated websites, it can sometimes be tricky finding the exact elements to scrape. So the locator function will get all the elements with the class, and then we just get the text content from the elements. Then it will close. And this code, which is similar to the code in our last code snippet, initializes Playwright using a context manager, which ensures that Playwright is properly started and cleaned up after use. Inside the block, it calls the function, the script quote, quotes Playwright to perform the web scraping tasks while Playwright is running. So let's try running the script. So now we can see all the quotes on the page. It's better to be hated for what you are than to be loved for what you are not. And we have the tags. And so we have each quote right on the page here. But a lot of web scraping is trial and error. So now that we see what we got, maybe we think, oh, I don't want these tags. I, I just want the text of the quote. So if you find you want something to change, then you can go back to the browser, go into the inspector, and then we can see, okay, well, I like this, and this is class text. So let's try just getting the class text. So I'll just update this to text and let's try running it again. Now we just have the text of each quote. It often takes some trial and error to get exactly what you want. Now I'm going to show you how to use AI to make scraping even easier. 
Our sponsor for this video, Agent QL, makes it simple to find the right elements to scrape on a page. We'll use Agent QL with Playwright to scrape comments from a YouTube video. So let's walk through it. First, we need to install the Agent QL SDK, and then if we didn't already have Playwright installed, we would ins install that as well. So I just did pip install Agent QL, and this installs everything you need to start scraping with AI. Then we need to install the dependencies and set the API key. So I'm gonna do agent ql init. And here we have to get our API key from the website. Luckily, they have a great free plan and you can do a lot just while on the free plan before you have to pay. So to get our API key, we just go to the website agentql.com and click get API key. If it's your first time, you'll have to create an account and sign in, and then we can just do create new API key. Then we can just copy the API key. And I'm gonna revoke this before the video goes live. Then we can just paste in the API key and choose the debug files path and choose if we wanna download an example script. No, because I'm going to be creating it. And that's it. Now we're ready to create our script. So now I'll create my new file, YouTube scraper.py. In this script, we'll be using AgentQL to scrape comments from a YouTube video. First, we need to import the necessary libraries. We're obviously gonna use Playwright for browser automation, and we need to import AgentQL for the AI-powered element querying and logging to help track of, keep track of what's happening in our script. Next, we configure logging to debug level so we can see detailed messages as the script runs. And we also define the URL we wanna go to, in this case, youtube.com. Now it's time to launch the browser. We're going to use Playwright to open the browser in non-headless mode so we can watch it navigate and interact with YouTube. So we have the with sync play, Playwright as Playwright and playwright.chromium.launch headless equals false as browser. So that's how we're gonna open the browser in headless mode. We also wrap the page object using agentql.wrap to enable AI-powered querying for page elements. And then we go to the URL. Next, we define several agentql queries. So here are the different queries, search query, video query, video control query, description query, comment query, Agent QL queries are how you query elements from a web page. A query describes the elements you want to interact with or consume content from and defines your desired output structure. The great thing is we don't need to know the exact CSS selectors to get the elements on the page. We just have to put a description in a format kind of similar to JSON and the AI will figure out how to access those elements on the page. So for instance, in this search query, this is going to find the search input element and the search button element. And then this is going to return a list of elements, a list of video elements, and each element is gonna have a video link, video title, and channel name. You can also provide a short description in natural language within parentheses to guide Agent QL in locating the right elements. Another difference between the search query and the video query, the search query is returning HTML elements, while the video query is returning actual data from the page. So generally those are the two main types of things that you're trying to get back. You're trying to get either HTML elements or actual data that you're trying to scrape. And just to clarify, these are not necessarily the, na the exact names of the elements on the YouTube page that we're trying to scrape. We're basically just imagining what, what we wanna call them and the AI figures out what we're referring to when it looks at the page. We're also getting access to the play or pause button, the expand description button. We're getting access to the description text. So we're, we are just using these agent QL queries and when we run them, then we can get the HTML elements on the page that correspond to these queries. Most of the rest of our code is going to be in this try block and then we'll catch the exceptions down here. So this section, that I just added is going to run the search. So first we're going to use the search query to find the input field and the button. Remember search query, 
search input and search button. So we are going to put that into a variable called response. So now we have response.search input. It's called search input because that's what we called it right up here. And we can now type into the input and we're going to type learn JavaScript course. So basically we're going to YouTube and we're searching for learn JavaScript course. We'll set the delay to 75 and then we'll do get the search button that click. And so, so we never actually had to, had to put the exact CSS selector to get the button. Agent QL just figured it out based on using that query here. So then we are going to do page that query elements and look for the video query. So if we go up here, we can see what video query is. That's the list of videos with the video link, the video title, and the channel name. So we're basically getting the, the list of videos that come back from the search. And then we're going to log something to the console, clicking YouTube videos. And the one that we're going to click, response.videos, the first element of the array, video title, text content. So this is the name of the video we're going to click. So we're basically just getting the text content of the title of that video. And then here is where we actually click that video, the first element in the array. Now, after selecting the video, we can run another query to expand the video's description. So we always start with page.query elements, and then what element are we going to qu query? The video control query. If we go up here, we can see we're looking for the player pause button and the expand description button. And then we just click that button. So with this step, we're interacting with the video page to make sure the description is fully visible, allowing us to scrape it next. Now that the description is expanded, we'll run the description query to capture the text of the video description and log it. The, we're, see, we're just getting the description text and we are logging the description text just like that. Next, we're just going to scroll nine times. We make a loop where we go through this nine times, press the page down button, and then wait for the page ready state. So when we scroll down, it will load more comments. And let's just make this three for now to make it run a little quicker. Finally, we use the comment query to scrape all the visible comments. And this is going to be a list that's going to have both the channel name and the comment text in each element in the list. So we are going to log how many comments that we captured. And then for each comment in the response, we're just going to print the log the comment. And the channel name is the channel name associated with that comment. And finally, we're going to log any errors. And then just for the demo, we are going to wait for timeout. And this is just going to allow you to see the effect of the script. Okay, let's try out the code. And it loads the Chromium browser. It searches for learn JavaScript full course. And then we'll click the first course that's not that sponsored post. And it is YouTube, so we're going to have to watch an ad. I'll just fast forward a little bit because this part can take a little some time. And we'll scroll down. And I'll keep scrolling down to load some more comments. And now it starts scraping the comments. And it's finished. So let's look into our terminal. So we can see first it queried for these elements, then it queried for these elements. And here is where it should get the description text. And you can see it actually logs the description text right here. And then we can see it starts giving us the comments. So the first comment is from me, Bo. Next, learn JavaScript DOM manipulation. And then the next comment is from Tangbian. It's insane to think I spent 5,000 bucks in a private school over the country over the course of a half a year to learn what this guy has taught me in three hours, 26 minutes and 42 seconds. And then you can see basically all the first few comments. If we wanted more comments, we could have had it scroll down even further, but this gives us a lot of comments, including a few comments that just give the sections of the video. That's what these are. So now you know the basics of Playwright for web scraping. Remember, use your code for good.